Okay, let's go and figure out the solution to this nice little math problem. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to need to know some basic trigonometry and algebra to solve this problem. But uh, let's go and take a look at the problem right now. So let me kind of scroll up so we can see the entire thing. Okay, so there we go. So it says a pole is one-third as tall as another pole 800 feet away. A 30-degree angle is formed from the tops of the poles. How tall are the poles? And you want to assume that these poles are perpendicular to the ground, i.e. they form a 90-degree angle. So if you want to pause the video and work on this problem for a few minutes, and don't feel shy about using a calculator because you're certainly going to need one. But uh, if you know how to do this problem, go ahead and put your final answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer here in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades, and I want to help you become as successful as possible in mathematics. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test, something like the GED, SAT, teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will make learning math much, much easier. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely need to be taking great notes um, as a math student. Uh, most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes, so improve your notes. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so, um, you know, kind of a lot going on here. But what is the question? Well, the question is, how tall are the poles? So we're talking about two different poles. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. So we have pole one, so we have a shorter pole, pole, excuse me, and a longer one. Okay, so the shorter pole will be about 230.94 feet. And that second pole, the longer one, the taller one here, is going to be 692.82 feet. Okay, so these are decimal approximations, but you should be pretty close to these numbers here. So if you got this thing correct, wow, that is very impressive. Matter of fact, let's give yourself a nice little happy face and A++. I don't usually give over 100%, but this time I am. I'm going to give you like 110% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that you absolutely understand some algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Nice job. Okay, so a lot going on in this problem, okay? The main thing here is that you really have to kind of absorb the information in the problem and then model it, okay? So any math problem, uh, algebra problem, word problem that we're talking about, again, you need to read the problem a few times, and then you need to model the situation. So we have a pole, okay, and it's one-third as tall as another pole 800 feet away. Okay, so we kind of want to make a little sketch of this situation. And then we have a 30-degree angle formed by the tops of the poles. Okay, so we got to model this thing so we kind of uh, see the structure of the problem visually. That really, really helps out. So you need a model all the time uh, when you are uh, trying to solve any math word problem. So let's go ahead and take a look at the situation. And this is how I interpret the problem. And hopefully this is the way you interpret the problem as well. All right, so we have a pole. So right here, let's uh, this yellow uh, pole right there. So that's one third this larger pole. Okay, so here's that one right there. And these two poles, okay, are perpendicular to the ground, so they're like this. Okay, uh, so both of these poles. Again, that's not in the problem, but I did tell you that. Uh, sometimes I'm kind of constrained on how much text I want to put into the problem. But anyways, uh, that is the situation. And these two poles are 800 feet um, away from one another. All right. So, uh, so, you know, kind of start with the basics and start building up your situation or start building up your diagram to model what's going on. So this would be pole one. We can call that the shorter one. And then here, pole two, this is the longer one. So the other part of this problem, it says that a 30-degree angle is formed from the tops, uh, tops of the poles. So if we go from this top to this top, uh, basically we're going to have a 30-degree angle. And really, um, to be more precise about it, 
uh, to be uh, clear, okay, if I really was going to type this out for like a final exam or a real exam, I would say a 30 degree angle for, uh, to the ground, okay? So I didn't say that, and I guess I was a bit remiss, but I'm explaining to you the situation right now. So just in case there's any confusion on what's going on, this is the situation, okay? So uh, now knowing this, right, so here's the tops of the poles. There's 30 degrees right there. Uh, we have this height, okay? We don't know the height of the tall pole, okay? But we'll just call it X, all right? We don't know what it is, and this is going to be in feet. Our answer is going to be in feet because the distance away from these two poles is uh, 800 feet. So we want to put our height in feet as well. But we do know that the shorter uh, pole here is one third, one third the length of whatever this is. Okay, so it's one third the length of this taller pole. So we can uh, express this height of this pole here as one third X if the height of this pole is X. Okay, so hopefully uh, this is making sense to us. And right here, because these uh, poles are perpendicular to the ground. This 800 feet right there, this length right here would also be 800 feet. So you can kind of see we're dealing with right angles and this angle right here would also be a right angle. Okay, so you're going to have to build this model. Then we're going to have to kind of start picking apart, you know, uh, pieces of information that we can build with this, uh, you know, kind of diagram. All right. So you'll kind of see where I'm going to take this uh, right now. Okay, because this is kind of a multi-step problem. So this is where I'm going with this problem here. So take a look at this triangle and tell me, does this triangle, you know, make sense to you? So I have a right triangle. This is 800 degrees. This is 30 degrees. And I want to solve for X. So what is X? Well, X would be this part right here. Okay. This would be X right there. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why are you solving for that? Well, that's, you know, all the information I can solve for right now. But if I get this height, okay, I'm going to be able to get this height. And then I will also be able to get this height. Okay. So uh, again, you need to understand that this uh, right triangle that I just formed has 30 degrees, 800 degrees here as the base. And I want to find this height right there. Okay. So we're going to kind of take that little triangle right here, uh, this, this part of the diagram, and we're just going to focus in on it right here. Okay. So to find this um, uh, side right here of this right triangle, all we need to do is use a trigonometric function. And the one that we want to use is the tangent. Okay. The tangent, because this angle here, anytime you have a right triangle and you're dealing with basic uh, right angle trigonometry, this is the hypotenuse from this angle. This side right here is the opposite side. And then this side right here is the adjacent side. So there is this little phrase. So Katoa, when you're dealing with basic right angle trigonometry, if you've never heard of this before, well, um, you may need to brush up on your basic trigonometry, but basically the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So I want to solve for X in this case, X is in the uh, opposite spot and I have 800 that's in the adjacent spot. So I want to look for the trigonometric ratio that involves both the opposite and the adjacent. And of course that would be the tangent. So I could say the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to of course, it's uh, equal to the opposite over the adjacent, but in this specific uh, scenario, it's X over 800 because X is our opposite and 800 is actually our adjacent. So we can build ourselves a nice equation just like this. So the tangent of 30 degrees is uh, equal to the opposite over adjacent or X over 800. So really we need to solve this equation right here. Tangent of 30 degrees. Now, because this is a fraction, I could express this as a fraction by just putting it over one. So tangent of 30 degrees over one is equal to X over 800. So how do I solve uh, for X? Well, this is very, very easy. Again, you want to have your calculator um, available, but basically this is a simple proportion. All you need to do is cross multiply like so. So X times one is X, and that's going to be equal to 800 times a tangent of 30, right? This is uh, simply a proportion and this is a cross product right here. So 800 times a tangent of 30. So we can just go into our calculator, 800 
times the tangent of 30 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And when you do this, you're going to get a decimal approximately. I guess I should change this to the approximate symbol, 461.88. Okay, so that's what X is equal to. So we just did all this work, but let's kind of go back to our problem, right? So we just got this side right here. That's 461.88, but 461.88 what? Well, that's 461.88 feet. But we're not done yet because we really kind of have to interpret what we just found. So let's go back to our original kind of uh, figure here. So if this, um, here is our pole, okay? And if this uh, side right here is one third, and this side here is also one third, okay, and the uh, from the um, uh, the angle formed between the tops, okay, basically you're going to have parallel line right here, okay. So you kind of see this figure being formed, this triangle being formed right here. So two thirds of the triangle is what we just found. We just found two thirds, uh, not of the triangle. Excuse me. The this um, leg of the triangle represents two thirds of the height of the pole. Okay, so the height of the pole, basically this angle here, 30 degrees. When you talk about basic geometry, you need to understand it would be the same as if we did this. Okay, 30 degrees right here. So that's you know a lot of um, kind of additional things that we can discuss, uh, basic uh, geometry, basic trigonometry, but hopefully you were able to interpret that, okay? So anyways, what we just found, this height is actually two-thirds, two-thirds of, um, uh, of the entire length of the pole. So the pole right here would be one-third plus two-thirds. Of course, that would be a complete one, right? So or three, uh, three over three, X or just one X. So then this is the entire length of the pole. All right. So we, again, we just use our basic trigonometry uh, skills to figure out this side right here, which is two thirds of the pole. Okay. But we don't know the height still. So it's two thirds X, but we can write ourselves a nice little equation now, because remember this side here, which is two thirds of the pole is 461.88. And that is equal to two thirds X. Okay. And again, X is the uh, the height of the entire pole. All right, so we're going to solve for x using some basic algebra skills now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So 2 thirds x is equal to 461. How do I solve for x? Easy. All I need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3 halves or divide both sides of the equation by 2 thirds. Uh, again, we're talking about basic algebra. If any of this stuff is confusing, if you're confused with the algebra, or the trigonometry or the geometry. I'm gonna suggest in my, my geometry course, I do teach right angle trigonometry and everything you need to know about high school geometry will be in that course. Um, again, you need to know some algebra in order to be successful uh, with geometry as well. So if you need help with algebra, you can check out my algebra course as well. All right, so let's go ahead and finish this up. So here, 461.88 times uh, 3 halves is going to be our answer. So in your calculator, just take 461.88 times 3 halves or multiply this by 3 and divide by 2, and you're going to get x is equal to 692.82. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, all this um, pieces of the puzzle right now. So that means that X, we just solved for X, that is the entire length of the tall, the tall pole, excuse me, that's 692.82 what? Well, feet, because we're dealing with feet. So that's the height of the, uh, the tall pole. And we know that the short pole is one third uh, the height of the um, uh, tall pole. So that's pretty easy to calculate. So all we need to do is simply take uh, one third of the height of the uh, taller pole, 692.82. When we do that, we get 230.94 feet. So the short pole is 230.94 feet, and the taller one is 692.82. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. Um, again, you know, um, as I promised, there is going to be, you know, geometry in this problem, trigonometry in this problem, and algebra in this problem. But really what you need to do, you know, to, you know, have the skills to solve this problem 
is kind of retain all the things that you're learning in mathematics. That's why, you know, if you take geometry, you have to remember the algebra that you learned, okay? Or if you're taking uh, trigonometry, you can't forget algebra and geometry. So when you truly want to learn math, okay, and you got to have the desire to want to learn, there really are no shortcuts, okay? You really have to make a commitment to studying to taking notes, to doing all the practice problems, because that's how all this stuff's gonna be absorbed into your long-term memory. Okay, so if this video was interesting, even to the slightest, and it was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.